Hey Rockhounds, welcome to part three of my rock collection. And today I'm gonna to show you my pyrite, some calcite, blue and green minerals, quartz minerals, all sorts of beauty, so stay tuned. This is my pyrite shelf, or iron sulfide shelf, because there's some marcasite too. Some more pyrite replaced fossils. This is a brachiopod, pyritized brachiopod from Ohio. This is also a pyrite replaced bivalve. Pyrite sun. Pyrite is one of my favorite minerals. It forms these lovely cubes, but it also makes other shapes too, like these little nodules. Lots of little cubes, all different sizes here. This is actually marcasite. It is also iron sulfide, but with a different, it's, it's a polymorph of pyrite. Close enough, it gets to be on my pyrite shelf. These are the famous pyrite cubes from Spain. This is a twinned pyrite cube. You can see the smaller cube growing out of the bigger one. This is a very large pyrite cube. From Mexico. The biggest one that I have. Beautiful pyrite sunflower. Looks like iron oxide after pyrite. This is an interesting form of pyrite. Different crystalline structure than the cubes. That's from Texas. Bosque draw pyrite found near Roswell. This is another example of that, but it's limonitized. So the pyrite has converted to an oxidized form of iron. This shelf has some other metallic minerals. Hollandite. Pyrolusite, which is a manganese oxide. This stuff gets on you. It's black and dusty. Galena from Missouri. Another beautiful mineral that, it's a lead ore, so it's mined processed for the ore but the specimens that you can get these big cubes are just so beautiful collectors love them so in that case you probably don't want to process the ore you want to sell the minerals to people like me it's a piece of magnetite or pyrite spalerite Metallic minerals are just beautiful. And of course, a lot of them are ores for other things. Galena can contain silver and gold. So, people like to mine it for that. Pyrite easily oxidizes to iron oxide minerals like hematite and limonite. So, these used to be Pyrite cubes, and now they're iron oxide cubes. These are from a location right here in New Mexico. A lot of times people will find big chunks of hematite like this. It's nice and heavy. And they think that they've found 
meteorites. While it is slightly magnetic, it's not as magnetic as an iron meteorite and the streak is red. I always assume when I find something like that that it's not a meteorite because meteorites are so rare. This is a form of iron oxide called gertite. This is hematite. They also call it kidney ore. This is from New Mexico. There's a cool little crystal of hematite that my husband found at Rock Hounding. This shelf is fluorite. Fluorite comes in lots of beautiful colors. It has, it forms interesting cubes that I love, but it also makes uh, vitroidal structures. There's some cubes there. And um, it's just really beautiful. It comes in lots of different colors. Small fry prospect fluorite with some small barite crystals. Often fluorite breaks into these tetrahedron, which are really beautiful. And it's just very pretty. It can also form in layers like in a stalactite or stalagmite cave layers. This is my quartz shelf. Of course you've got Lake Superior agates. Some of the best most beautiful agates in the world. Nodules, chalcedony, chert, highlight opal. This is a crystal of man-made quartz. blue agate from Hemez that I found. Of course, everybody knows what amethyst is, the purple variety of quartz, macrocrystalline quartz. Macro quartz, you can see the crystals. Micro quartz, you can't see the crystals. This is fire agate. Quartz from Arkansas. This is called grape chalcedony. Little tiny purple balls of chalcedony. This is from Indonesia. Super cool. Rose quartz, agates, various types. This is called a ventrine. A variety of quartz. Citrine. Agates, this bowl is made of agate. Big rich geodes. Chalcedony rose. This shelf has some evaporites on it, gypsum, potash, which is an ore that is mined for in agricultural industry. It's used to make fertilizer. Desert rose gypsum, barite, snowball gypsum, aragonite. Aragonite is a polymorph of calcite. That's aragonite. Cave onyx, also known as travertine. Salt. So when I say evaporate, I'm talking about things that crystallize out of solution as they evaporate. Like if there's a big lake that evaporates, dries up. It leaves its minerals behind in crystalline form. Same thing when the ocean uh, 
recedes from land, you get these thick salt deposits as the ocean water dries away with lots of salt. Gypsum is also an evaporite. People call this selenite, which is just another word for gypsum. This started off life as aragonite, and now it's calcite. It's called a pseudomorph. This is a quartz after gypsum pseudomorph. So quartz replaced the gypsum after it was formed. This shelf has mostly blue and green minerals, most of which are copper minerals. And over here I have calcite because I just think it's a very pretty mineral. And I like the different colors and shapes that it comes in. This is dog's tooth calcite on a small scale. This is dog's tooth calcite on the larger scale. Rhombohedral calcite. This is beautiful calcite from Mexico. Very clear. Rhombohedral calcite from the ice pit up near the Harding mine. And then over here I've got blue and green minerals, smithsonite with hemimorphite, malachite, calcanthite, it's copper sulfate. This is a poisonous mineral, not one of the minerals that you would want to lick. Solid copper, native copper. Copper replaced wood from the Nascimento mine. This is actually copper ore. It's one of the only places in the world I know of where the petrified wood is replaced with copper minerals. So it's really special stuff. Turquoise. Some more smithsonite. Bornite, malachite, chalcopyrite, more malachite. This is chrysocolla. It is a copper ore. Azurite. It's a beautiful dark deep blue color. And you almost always find it with malachite. And that is because it is a chemical alteration product of malachite. Malachite weathers to azurite. You can see this piece, is, it looks like it's all commingled together. But the azurite is the conversion of the malachite chemically, chemical weathering. Another chunk of azurite from Bisbee, Arizona. This is an azurite concretion from Nascimento Mine, New Mexico. And these pieces have native copper in them. Little delicate leaves of native copper in the rock itself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and please stay tuned for part four in which I will show you my petrified wood collection, garnets, and a whole bunch of other beautiful minerals. Have a great day.